Well, here we are. The time has come and thank you very much for being here. If you are new to my channel, let me give you a quick background history of my Catlianthe Zagarik Wax African Beauty and why it is that we have come to this point where I am about to nip it in the bud. We have four juicy buds there and you know what? That looks really awesome, doesn't it? And you'd think, yay, I'm going to get a blooming. Well, no. This orchid is capable of so much more and this is the latest growth and up here is how big it should be. Sorry for the reflection of the light there. This little growth is a puny little growth that grew during the winter, during extreme conditions, advert conditions, not enough light and definitely no fertilizer. This is important for you to know because I'm not just nipping anything in the bud that's about to come into bloom just because I think it's a great teachable moment. If this orchid were healthy, there is absolutely no way those buds would go. But considering what it has been through, in 2020, it had a massive division taken out of it, reducing the orchid to 50% of what it was. In 2021, we then got a growth that is sort of, I would say, a stress growth, but it wasn't. I would prefer to call it a recovery growth, and they never ever then grow to size because the orchid is missing 50% of its storage structures. Now... Through the winter of 21 and 22, lo and behold, here is a growth that is even smaller. And we want healthy orchids. Isn't that what this is all about? Growing healthy orchids and getting them to bloom, enjoy the blooms, etc. But healthy orchids doesn't necessarily mean that no matter what time of year it's growing a growth, that we chuck the maximum amount of fertilizer at it simply because it's growing a new growth. If situations and circumstances and the environment is interrupted while the orchid is growing a new growth during a time of year when us in the northern or southern hemisphere would be supplementing with light because we don't have enough daylight to go around hour wise if any of that is disrupted that growth will never grow to size then we can't keep adding fertilizer either because the fertilizer would go into the pot the growth has no light in order to absorb and do everything it should do because there's no light to match the amount of fertilizer we are putting in so it is highly recommended in adverse conditions to just let it be, let the growth do its thing, come to terms with the fact that a growth will be small, it won't perform the way we expect it to, the orchid will stay healthy however, the growth will still produce roots and that will all add to then the future health and strength of the orchid as it recovers from adverse conditions. If we can already make peace with that thought while these adverse conditions are happening and we can already come to terms with the fact that if this growth were then to bloom out that we will have to nip it in the bud and not let it bloom out for the health of the orchid when it comes time then to do the deed the dirty deed in my opinion when it comes to growing an orchid and wanting it to bloom when it comes time to nipping the buds off we should already be relatively relieved that it's come to this point and thankfully we're doing the right thing by our orchid and the reason being the energy it's going to take this orchid to bloom out is just going to stress it even further you can see that i have shriveling of leaves in the back already it is also trying to produce a new root system it's all kicking off in this pot at the moment and it's just too much for the orchid to handle to then also bloom. So let's relieve this orchid of the stress that it is under right now and take off this spike. Now you can cut it with secateurs or you can cut it with a sharp knife like I'm doing. I want the knife because I want to do something with the buds afterwards. I'm going to dissect them because not often do we see this happening? Uh, who would want to do this if this growth were healthy? Like I said, I would not be cutting it off. Come on, you know you want to. There we go. We have done the right thing by our orchid and I'm feeling very, very good about it. I promise you, I'm not making it up. If I was concerned or scared, you know, I would tell you this is concerning. I am worried at this stage, but new roots, the growth can now relax and the orchid can focus on what it needs to do and that is get healthy, strong and grow back to size. Another little bit of reflection, there you go. 
and then hopefully in 2023 if there are no other adverse conditions that are going to interrupt anything that we're trying to achieve for a proper blooming in 2023 we're going to have ourselves an african beauty that really really lives up to its name beauty right shall we have a look and see what buds look like from the inside <laughs> i mean we're here we might as well but <laughs> I know, we'll get to the buds, I promise. But again, the orchid hobby has a fantastic relationship with the word but. There are a multitude of words that the orchid hobby has a fantastic relationship with, but being one of them, if being another, if you are asking yourself if you have to do this every single time when a weak orchid comes into spike or forms buds, the answer is no, because it will all depend on the species, the hybrid, how vigorous is it in its own right, what kind of stress can it handle in order for it to bloom out without being a detriment to the orchid's overall health and for its future. Catlianthes are bifoliates. Bifoliates are divas. They behave completely different and they will throw a strop. So in those cases, it is best to err on the side of caution and do the right thing and nip it in the bud if the orchid needs to recover. However, check this out. This is Prostechia radiata. And you can see a green spike with lots of little nodes where blooms once were. This orchid is a division and I let her bloom even though she has just recently arrived in my collection. She has to go through the process of acclimating. She has to be in a different setup. She is growing roots and a new growth at the same time. All of that wrapped into one and then she started to grow a spike. So let me give you some pointers that can probably help you as you observe your orchids and whether you should let a stressed orchid bloom or not. Look at the pseudobulbs. If the pseudobulbs are shriveling to a point of stress where you are not comfortable with, it's always about what you are comfortable with seeing, then intervene and nip the spike in the bud or cut the entire spike off. Your growing circumstances are completely different from my growing circumstances. Know that pseudobulbs are storage organs. They are there to sustain the orchids through periods of drought and stress so that the orchid can survive and eventually get back to growing if anything happens that is not quite right. The moment you're not comfortable with what you're seeing, if the pseudobulbs are shriveled, cut the spike off, your orchid will thank you for it long term. Another thing that you might want to take into consideration before you do anything radical and forfeit blooms on an orchid that you're not exactly sure about whether it should bloom or not is to understand the vigor of the genus because shriveled pseudobulbs can be alarming even with an established orchid but the vigor of a genus if you are aware of how tough they are and how much they can handle how quickly will they bounce back and when i say how much they can handle i'm talking about stress and how quickly they will bounce back then by all means observe the spike watch how the rest of the orchid is performing while it is forming the spike keep the spike intact keep the buds intact keep watching your pseudobulbs and if all is in par with you feeling comfortable that you can see the orchid is growing roots you can see that the spike is developing nicely the moment you see bud blast that is a signal to cut the spike off unless an orchid experience some weird draft out of nowhere there should be no bud blast on a spike that is forming on an orchid. But if you're already dubious of whether your orchid is stressed and should bloom or shouldn't bloom, and you see bud blast happening on your spike, cut it off. The orchid is telling you, I can't do more of this. If everything is going according to plan, and you can see buds swelling and blooming out, even though the pseudobulbs are shriveled, some roots are doing their job in the pot, by all means, enjoy the blooms. Again, your personal level of comfortable is important here. And just because we are in doubt, I don't want everybody to be cutting off their spikes because now I may have created an element of doubt for you in your collection, then understand the vigor of the orchid and how much stress is it capable of tolerating without declining to a point of no return and when it comes to prostechias let me tell you they are vigorous robust and they can really really handle stress very very well without 
going into a complete and total decline. That is why I brought out my radiata, because if you know from previous videos, some of which I will link below if you haven't seen them, these pseudobulbs were super, super shriveled, and look at them now. And the orchid bloomed. I personally popped off a bud when I potted her up. That was my mistake, but the orchid bloomed out and had the entire duration of the blooming period until the bloom started to fade. All the while, she was growing roots in the pot, working on the next new growth right here and plumping up the pseudobulbs. So that just as a side note that you need to be comfortable at what stage you want to intervene for your own peace of mind until the next go around when an orchid produces a spike and you can say, yep, she's healthy, she's strong, she can take it. And now let's go and do some dissecting. <laughs> All right, let's take one of these buds. I'll start with peeling. Ooh, they're tough. Huh, there we see what would have been the lip. Look at that. There we go, look at that. And let's dissect one. Let's get the biggest one and cut it. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I think that is pretty, pretty amazing. Well, there you have it. And my orchid can recover. I have been waiting for this day for a long time. I promise you I have. I've become so accustomed to cutting spikes off from back in the day when I was fighting Phalaenopsis and trying to get them to grow in Lekka and self-watering. I was cutting 13 spikes off during one winter season. That has hardened me off <laughs> for any future cutting of spikes or nipping things in the bud. I hope you found this interesting updates will follow if you have a similar case happening in your collection just know that you're doing your orchid a favor by not letting her bloom out really appreciate your time thank you so much for watching have yourself a beautiful day on one condition please that you stay safe take care bye